Welcome to Ripple Success Webinars. Today's topic is the Ripple Admin. We're going to look at best practices and tips and tricks to make administration of Ripple easy. First of all, you want to start by asking yourself, are you the Ripple Admin? Are you on the right plan, either premium or phenomenal, and do you have access or visibility? If you have any questions about either of those things, reach out to support at ripple.com and we'll be happy to help you. If you are the Ripple Admin, well then, whoa the power! As an administrator, you can monitor organizational activities, load and manage users, and set organizational goals and badges. Let's dive right into Ripple and see how you do that. Immediately after logging into Ripple, you'll notice that next to your name, you've got Settings. This is where you'll go for all things administrative related. So I'm going to click on Company Settings. It takes me to Look and Feel. The more you customize the look and feel of your Ripple instance, the more it feels like an extension of your own organization. So let's start by updating our logo. Got your logo here, click open, there we go. Next, I'm going to upload the company name and change the colors. I chose the colors that are the same as our website. Let's click Save Customizations, Exit, re Refresh. And there we go. Now, next to my name, you'll see the company name, the company logo, and the company name. Fantastic. Let's do it again. Back to company names, we're going to go to company settings. This time, we're going to look at badges. Badges are a great way for your team to really organize and have fun thanking each other. So the first thing you want to determine is organizational rules. Do you want to limit the number of badges per week per giver, or do you want to set it to unlimited? Today, I'm going to limit it to five badges per week per giver, and click Save. Next, I'm going to build a badge. The more custom your badges feel, the more fun they are for people to use. So let's build a badge. It's pretty simple. Start by uploading a badge picture. We give you lots of different images for you to choose from, or you can upload your own. I've got a nice happy face customer here, so I'm going to use that one. And I'm going to click Upload. Next, we want to give it a badge tag or a badge name. So for the badge tag, let's call it the happy customer, all right? And a description. The description lets people know why they chose this badge to give or let somebody else know what they did and the reason they're getting it. So we're gonna say exceeding, whoops, exceeding customer expectations. Okay, brief little description. There's two more things. The next is skills. Skills are optional, but they're a great way to really say thanks to somebody in a fun way and yet still add things that they've accomplished to their profile. So you're limited to the three skills you're going to give per badge and for the happy customer I'm going to give helpfulness, results, and customer advocacy. Great. Now the one last thing you can do is for anybody who builds a badge they can set badge rules. This is optional as well. Let's click edit. You can limit the number of times a person gives this badge and you can also limit who gives the badge? For today, I'm not going to do either of those. So let's click Done. All right, we'll hit Save. And now you'll notice the Happy Customer badge is right there waiting for us. Next is Objectives or Goals. Objectives are the key things that your entire organization is working towards. Any already clear created objectives or goals that you can browse and identify here. Or you can, if you know the names, you can simply type them in here. I'm going to choose two, the best place to work and transparency. These are two goals that our company is always looking to work forward. So let's hit exit and you'll notice immediately on the right hand side you'll the key goals or key objectives that we're looking forward to and if I hover over one of those I get the whole picture of what that is. I've got the company logo and the company name and if I click change badge I can see my happy customer. Fantastic! The next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to decide who to add. So if we go back up to the settings and we click on people. On the right hand side you'll notice active, inactive, and suspended. Active users are anybody that you've activated, anybody who's activated themselves. Inactive users are users that you've uploaded but you haven't activated yet. And suspended users are people who have been active but you suspended, maybe because they left the organization or for some other reason. So let's start by adding a user. I'm going to add Michael James. Michael James is new to our organization, but his email address is very important because 
the email he goes by is everything that his Ripple account is going to be based on. And I'm going to add his manager. I can also add his title and his department, as well as some connections. These might be peers or people who work for him. Whoops. So I'm going to add Deborah. The one other thing I want to determine is, is Michael active, inactive, or suspended? For right now, we're going to make him inactive. All right, we'll click Add. Now I can search, and there's Michael. Let's click Cancel again. Looking at Michael, the other thing I want to determine before I activate him is, what's the email or communication that's going to go out to him? So if you click on Tools, you'll see a customizable email. Change this to your name, and set the message to whatever is appropriate for your organization. It comes with a custom message, but you can really customize it yourself. So click Save Email. Go back to Users, and you can immediately toggle through all of your users, your active users, your inactive users, which includes Michael, suspended users, and your administrators. So let's go back to inactive. Just by clicking next to first name, I select all users, I can take action, I can make them active, hit apply, and now Michael's got an email asking him to join. If I click back to all and I scroll down, there he is. I see Michael James is an active user. All right. The other way to do this is to import many users at one time. Next to Add User, you'll notice Import Users. If we click on this, it allows you to download a CSV template. When you download this template, you really want to follow the format. So if I open this, it says right away, please do not delete the first six rows of this template. These first six rows are critical. Leave them as they are. Right below the sixth row, under on the row seven, you can click the first name and upload your first name, last name, email addresses, title, and department or manager email. Again, the email, email addresses are what's really important. So we're going to close this, save it appropriately. I'm going to upload the file. And now I have my user load. Click open. And again, I'm going to choose to not activate them right now. By clicking active, the minute I hit import, they'll all receive an email. If by clicking unactive, I can choose to add them later. All right. The last thing you as a administrator might want to do is really look to see how people are using your Ripple instance. And so for that, we have reports. Again, next to your name, at the company heading, you have reports. You can do a usage report, which is a big picture report, or you can do an activity, which really allows you to drill down. So for activities, let's look specifically at objectives. I'm going to look at just objectives and erase these other filters. I can also select a date range, either this week, this month, last month, or the last three months, or I can set a specific date field. I can have all people under one report, or I can look at certain people. So for today, I'm going to look at Deborah. Click Run Report. These are all of the goals or objectives that Deborah's worked on in the last three months. If I want something a little less specific and a bit more generic, I can go back up to Show and change this to Usage. Then, last three months, or set the date field. Maybe I want to do the last year. And instead of having just Deborah, I can have all. Click Run Report, and there's our report. You'll notice that right next to each person's name, I can sort by Thanks Sent, Thanks Earned, Actions Open, Actions Complete, Feedback Requested, and Unsolicited Feedback. This report is a great way for you to have a real sense of what your usage is at Ripple. Just to be clear, your usage report is big picture, your activity report lets you really find what you're looking for, and your loops report is something that we'll discuss in a future webinar. Now that we've looked at all the things that you can do to set up your own Ripple instance as the administrator, let's talk about how do you communicate that. Really the customization of communication is what will make it feel unique and special to your organization. Let your team know. Have fun with it. Talk about how you can create awesome organizations and have great feedback. For best practices, the more you customize your communication, the more likely people are to really embrace Ripple. We offer lots of different communications for you, including customized email, updates, additional education, and additional emails and resources. You can reach out to any of us at any time for help. The other thing is, 
To get started right away, it just takes three steps. You want to start by loading your team and inviting them, double check your company settings, and run a usage report. It's a great way for you to get started right away. So, log into ripple.com and get going. If you have any questions, reach out to support at ripple.com. And for the more helpful stuff, there's all sorts of information at support.ripple.com. Thanks.